Hey guys, this is uh, Philip. I'm originally from Germany. Um, I live in Las Vegas now for a year. I was in a relationship when the pandemic started and uh, broke things up a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things that bothered me in the relationship really was um, alcohol involved. And um, for you, Rich, with the experiences you have made, I, I have a question. How are you actually dealing with people in your surroundings and people in your environment that have not a real addiction where they get hooked up on alcohol or things like every single day, <clears throat> but more even, you know, oh, let's have a glass of wine and then one glass turns into two or three and it happens like once a week. How do you handle um, people like that? Uh, yeah, keep up the good work and talk to you soon. Thanks for your question, Philip. Uh, I suspect that this is probably a more prevalent issue living in a place like Las Vegas than yes. it would be maybe in other locations. Um, I'm empathetic to the predicament, but I would say for me, it's kind of a double-edged situation because on the one hand, um, you know, I've been sober for a long time and I'm really just never around people like that anymore. Uh, it's just not part of my inner social circle uh, like it once was, but if and when I am around that kind of scenario, it doesn't really bother me that much because my sobriety is strong. It's not like I'm triggered by it. I can be around people that are drinking a couple of glasses of wine and it, it doesn't really affect me in mm -hmm. any meaningful way. Mm -hmm. Like if it starts getting crazy and people are getting hammered and stuff like that, I'll just leave because it's boring for me. Right, right. But it's not like I feel threatened or anything like that. Um, and the reason I'm not around people like that very much is that I just don't, I don't seek out those people or those experiences anymore like I used to. Um, but when I, when, I, when I do encounter them, I, I'm, I'm pretty capable of managing it without incidents. Um, it doesn't affect your energy. No, it doesn't yeah. affect my energy. So, so one question I guess I would have up front that I'm curious about is, is why Philip it's so bothersome for you because you're talking about people who have maybe two or three glasses of wine once a week, which is a pretty, for a lot of people, like that's a pretty normal thing. It's not that out of control. No. So what is it inside of you that's getting activated by that? And if it's just that you don't wanna have that in your environment, then that's cool. Th but that just, means, that. that just means you're gonna have to expand your social circle and find other types of people to hang out with or, you know, involve yourself in, in you know, like get out to the Red Rocks or just get, you know, go to places where it's a different type of cultural cohesion where right. drinking really isn't so front and center in terms of how you're interacting socially. Um, personally, I'm just not in the business of, of taking anyone else's inventory. So I don't sit in judgment of somebody who wants to have two or three glasses of wine, but, and I would say this to you, like we do have choices as to who we spend our time with. And I think in my experience, the best way of managing this kind of situation, if you're just not enthusiastic about being with people who are into that right now, you don't have to make a big statement about it or a manifesto about how you're not gonna stand for this anymore. You could just back away slowly from that environment. Right. And I think of it in terms of concentric rings of intimacy. So if you think of yourself in the middle and then there's a bunch of circles outside of you that expand, who is in that inner ring? And those would be the people that you trust the most, you trust implicitly. Then the next ring of people would be people who maybe are just more casual friends and it kind of goes out from there. So I'm constantly thinking about the people that I keep in that inner circle and then the people who get moved to outer rings because something else happens and you have the ability to slowly transition your social time to more like-minded people who are aligned with your social habits and you can move those you know you can move away from those people or those people just get kind of slowly pushed out to a different ring it doesn't mean that you can't be friends with them anymore it's just that the dynamic of your friendship might get tweaked a little bit mm. and it doesn't have to be that big a deal and I would also say that it's important, you know, on the subject of not taking anyone's inventory or making a big deal in terms of how you proclaim, you don't have to proclaim this to anybody. I think it's important to have compassion 
for the fact that it's been a fucking hard year for a mm. lot of people. And certain people are gonna be like, I wanna have two or three glasses of wine. And if they can do that and they're happy with their life, that's their business. It's not mine to judge. So I tend to err on, on giving people a break and giving people some latitude and understanding that we all have different ways of coping with the various anxieties and stressors that, that we face. But ultimately, this is about your relationship with you and I think it's incumbent upon you to stop focusing on what others are doing or being upset because people aren't behaving in a manner that you would prefer them to behave. What, you know, stop grinding on why they aren't doing, doing things your way and just focus more on, on your path and your choices and the people that you choose to spend time with. 